organization under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, please be seated. Next on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Are there any uh, amendments to the agenda? Woman uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to make a change to the agenda. Uh, we have two proclamations that are very similar um, on the agenda, with the exception that Proclamation D states that every first Friday in June would be recognized as National Gun Violence Awareness Day. So I'd like to remove item D, and if you can add that to the wording and your proclamation for item C. All right. Would you like to do that in the form of a motion just so we can approve the agenda? Yes, I move that we remove item D and add the language stated to the proclamation on item C. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, we'll call for the question. Uh, Councilman Pete? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilwoman Miles? Aye. Councilwoman Neville? Aye. Vice Mayor? Yes. That's a yes for me. That motion carries six to zero. Let me make sure I get that line. All right, before we. Okay. All right, next on our agenda are the awards and proclamations. Uh, Councilwoman DeVille, what's up? Thank you, Mayor. We'll start by uh, sharing a proclamation recognizing June as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, and more Pride Month. Whereas we are a nation founded upon and guided by the principles of equality, justice, and freedom for all. Whereas the Prince William County Board of Supervisors resolved to proclaim June as LGBTQ plus Pride Month in 2018 and 2019, whereas the town of Dumfries lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, and more residents are a vital part of our community and contribute greatly to the economic and social well-being of our community. And whereas the town of Dumfries is strengthened by and thrives upon the rich diversity of ethnic, cultural, racial, gender, and sexual identities of its residents. And whereas the Center for Disease Control recognizes that negative perceptions of the LGBTQ plus community result in increased risk of experiences of violence, mental health, and substance abuse against and among its members. And whereas the town of Dumfries added protections in its equal opportunity employment policy based on gender and sexual orientation in 2018. And whereas June is widely recognized in the United States as LGBTQ Pride Month. Whereas the town of Dumfries recognizes the importance of equality and freedom from discrimination. And whereas the town of Dumfries believes that our power lies in our diversity and acceptance of all. Now therefore be it resolved that the town of Dumfries hereby proclaims the month of June to be lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning and more pride month. Happy pride Dumfries. And so we have two organizations. If you'd like to share a few words and come stand before our council, I have a copy of the proclamation. So you can take the mic over there and then come stand here, please.
of news reports around the country that the LGBTQ plus community remains under attack. So it's heartwarming that here in Dumfries, as well as in the cities of Manassas, Manassas Park, and earlier today at Prince William County, that the government recognizes the importance of the LGBT community constituents. Yesterday, as I began my 78th trip around the sun, uh, and to blatantly plagiarize the aforementioned Washington Post article, which concludes saying that I'm glad that rainbow merchandise is assaulting my eyes in Target. I remember what it once, <clears throat> what it was like to feel totally alone. Some other person might see those rainbows today and realize that they are no longer alone and realize that they are among many others that will be able to finally find acceptance. So I'm assuming there are no rainbows on your proclamation, but it's loudly saying to everyone here in the town of Dumfries, you belong here. And for that, we thank you. Good evening, I'm Evelyn Brumar. I'm the executive director and founder of Casa Brumar Foundation. I'm also human rights commissioner for Princeton County and I also sit on the LGBTQ advisory board to the governor. It was created under Northam. I got to serve Northam and now I serve Yonkin. But I'm here because I appreciate what you all just did because being seen and being heard is very important, especially to our youth. The organization that I created is to help our LGBTQIA plus youth make sure that they have a community, are able to finish high school, to become productive members of society, even though discrimination is outlawed, it still happens. So proclaiming every day that you can, that you support the community and making a special effort, at least during June, shows the community that you stand with them in solidarity. Pride Month came to existence because it was an uprising for our rights and our human dignities. And every month when we recognize that, we're appreciating and showing solidarity with our, with our older queers that you matter. And the queers of today, the LGBTQIA plus community of today, you matter too. And thank you so much for doing this. Much love. And could we have representatives from both groups come up front? You all can come up too. And if someone in the audience, um, Ms. Pandak, if you could help us with the picture. Thank you. Thank you and happy That's belated birthday. Thank you. <laughs> I can stand up, I guess. Just a little bit more, Jeff. That's, that's my brow. Okay. <laughs> I think I can get everybody out. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Happy Friday. <laughs> and by the way, you don't have to drive all the way to DC for a Pride celebration. All of your friends are going to have a Sunday during the Pride Festival. This Sunday, not October, first Sunday, the second. There was for the last year. Yeah. Thank you again. The floor is still yours, so you can read the next one, please. All right, so next on our agenda is a proclamation to commemorate Juneteenth. And if I could have members present of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated um, approach the um, microphone and the Friends of the Dumfries Slave Cemetery, we have a proclamation for both, a copy of the proclamation for both of you. So, whereas the Emancipation Proclamation, effective January 1st, 1863, established that all enslaved people in Confederate states and rebellion against the union shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. And whereas this order was largely ignored by Southern slave owners, and whereas on June 19th, 1865, Major General Gordon Granger informed a reluctant community in Galveston, Texas, that the Emancipation Proclamation had freed 
enslaved Americans and rebel states over two and a half years earlier. And whereas on this date, Major General Gordon Granger's General Order Number 3 was read to, to the people, announcing in pertinent part that the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. And whereas this announcement resulted in widespread celebration amongst freedmen and women, and whereas the descendants of African slaves continue to tr the tradition of celebration each year on June 19th, recognized as Juneteenth. The significance and importance of Juneteenth. The town council of the town of Dumfries declared Juneteenth as an official holiday in the town of Dumfries in 2019. Now, therefore, be it further resolved, Juneteenth will be celebrated on June 19th, 2022, in the town of Dumfries. And with that, we have two copies of the proclamation, one to the men of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. So if you could come up front or if you'd like to say a few words, you definitely can. And we also have a copy for the Friends of the Dumfries Slave Cemetery. So good evening. So I come today, stand on behalf of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity, Pi Lambda Lambda chapter here in the Prince William County. Uh, today, I bring greetings from my president and boss of my chapter, Brother Jeff Allen. Uh, he was not able to make it today, but we just want to say thank you uh, from Pi Lambda Lambda chapter. And we are really appreciated for this day of Juneteenth. And we look forward to be out here in Dumfries on the next couple of days celebrating right here. So thank you very much. You need to move a little bit. You can't be in front of the white stand. <laughs> Just a little bit, so that's the brown, that's the pink piece. I don't do wedding, so don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my last proclamation for tonight, not the last proclamation, but the last one I'll be reading tonight, is a proclamation recognizing the Friends of the Dumfries Slave Cemetery. Whereas the Friends of the Dumfries Slave Cemetery strive to preserve, restore, and maintain the slave, free Black, and freedmen cemetery located in the town of Dumfries, Virginia. Whereas the Friends of the Dumfries Slave Cemetery are dedicated to memorializing this sacred site as a burial ground for slaves in Dumfries and to give them the dignity and death that they were denied in life. Whereas the Friends of the Dumfries Slave Cemetery promote education and awareness of the historical role of African Americans and that they've played in the town of Dumfries and its surrounding areas. Whereas the Friends of the Dumfries Slave Cemetery is committed to honoring the culture and vital contributions of generations of African Americans to our nation. Therefore, be it resolved, 
that the town of Dumfries recognizes, appreciates, and supports the continued efforts of the Friends of the Dumfries Slave Cemetery as the organization works to honor, respect, and preserve the sacred space in our community. Thank you. and president of the Friends of Dumfries Slave Cemetery. And I want to thank you from the very bottom of my heart for this proclamation, for your recognizing the importance of remembering American victims of American chattel slavery. It's so important that we remember our past. And we as descendants of victims of American chattel slavery have very little that we can look at and say that tells the story of what our ancestors went through. When Joanne Bonneries, who's there in the audience with me and, and my husband and, and our Omega friend, all of us, when we started Friends of Dumfries Slave Cemetery, we went over after, behind the school and we saw that it was just a dump. It was abandoned. It was a terrible, it was an awful place. And we resolved, Joanne and I resolved that we were gonna clean this place up and give our ancestors the dignity that they, they deserved. And I'm so thankful that the town of Dumfries has helped us along the way just by recognizing that these the people are there and they contributed so much to this country and where this country is today and they've been forgotten and we want to remember them and we want to thank them. We want to let them know that their lives here were not in vain and we thank, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it, we thank God, I'm not sorry, for the opportunity to do this, to serve our ancestors. And this is what we want to teach our children, that they have ancestors to be proud of. Because any shame associated with slavery lies with the slaveholder, not the slave. What we want to do, we would like to start a movement to have the word slave capitalized, every single letter of that word capitalized to honor our ancestors. They weren't given reparations, but when you see that word slave, S-L-A-V-E, you know that it represents victims of American chattel slavery and nothing else. There's been a controversy over that, believe it or not. But if you look at records uh, of escaped slaves during slavery times, the word slave, as they advertised rewards for the return of the slave, that word was all in capital letters. They wanted everybody to see it. We didn't have a problem with the grammar then, but now we seem to have a problem with the grammar. However, this is something that we want to do. And I hope that you'll spread the word and we want our, our people, our community, everyone to know that these people lived here, they worked here, and their life here was not in vain. And we should be proud of them. And I thank you for this proclamation. God bless you. Well said. Uh, next on our agenda is a proclamation recognizing the first Friday in June as National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Since this proclamation declares that the first Friday in June to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day in the town of Dumfries to honor and remember all victims and survivors of gun violence, and to declare that we as a country must do more to reduce gun violence. 
where it's every day more than 110 Americans are killed by gun violence, alongside more than 200 who are shot and wounded. And on average, there are nearly 16,000 gun homicides every year, whereas Americans are 26 times more likely to die by gun homicide than people in other high-income countries. And whereas Virginia has 1,065 gun deaths every year with a rate of 12.2 deaths per 100,000 people in Virginia, it's the 34th highest rate of gun deaths in the United States. And whereas gun homicides and assaults are concentrated in cities with more than half of all firearms-related gun deaths in the nation occurring in 127 cities. And whereas cities across the nation, including Dumfries, are working to end the senseless violence with evidence-based solutions. And whereas protecting public safety in the communities they serve is the highest responsibility. Where support for the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens goes hand in hand with keeping guns away from people with dangerous histories. And whereas mayors and law enforcement officers know their communities best, are most familiar with local criminal activity and how to address it, and are best positioned to understand how to keep their citizens safe. Whereas gun violence prevention is more important than ever as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to exacerbate gun violence after more than two years of increased gun sales, increased calls to suicide and domestic violence hotlines, and an increase in city gun violence. Whereas in June, January 2013, Ms. Pendleton was tragically shot and killed at the age of 15. And on June 3rd, 2022, to recognize the 25th, what would have been the 25th birthday of Hadia Pendleton, born June 2nd, 1997, people, people across the United States will recognize National Gun Violence Awareness Day, and they will wear orange in tribute and for her and other victims of gun violence and loved ones of those who are victims. Whereas this idea was surprise, was inspired by a group of Hadia's friends who asked their classmates to commem commemorate her life by wearing orange. They chose this color because hunters wear orange to announce themselves to other hunters when out in the woods. And orange is a color that symbolizes the value of human life. And whereas anyone could join this campaign by pledging to wear orange on the first Friday, and the first Friday from here on out to help awareness about gun violence. And whereas by wearing orange this year on June 3rd, Americans raised awareness about gun violence and honored the lives of gun violence victims and survivors. And whereas we renew our commitment here in the town of Dumfries to reduce any gun violence, and we pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and encourage responsible gun ownership to help keep our children safe. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Dumfries declares the first Friday to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day. I encourage all citizens to support their local community's efforts to prevent these traffic, tragic effects of gun violence and honor all human lives. Next on our agenda is the approval of our May 17th, 2022 minute minutes. Move to approve the May 17th minutes. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. Councilwoman DeVille? Aye. Councilwoman Miles? Aye. Councilman Brown? Aye. Councilman Pete? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. And that's a yes for me. That motion carries 6 0. All right. Next on our agenda is a citizen comment period. Mayor, on tonight, Mr. Robert Hand is here to speak on gun control ignorance. Okay. Please state your uh, name and address for the record, and the clerk will uh, keep the time two minutes for you. Bonjour. 
My name is Robert Hand and I live in Williamstown. First off, I want to start with Councilwoman Neville. You are not allowed to block citizens on social media by virtue of Trump v. Knight Foundation. Please unblock me. Now, thuds, liars, and ignoramuses of the board. And that applies in more, to more than one category for some of you. Yes, people should be remembered for the violence. You know what should also be remembered? There are roughly 400 million guns in America. There are roughly about 40,000 casualties, and that's being generous, two-thirds of which being suicide. Reduce the remaining amount further by gun violent, by uh, gang violence, parse it down into whether it was legally justified or not, it is a sliver. You are being dishonest. Mayor Wood, you said earlier uh, last week how it is easier to buy a gun than it is to get a book. That is bull crap. You know it. You're lying. Vice Mayor, I'm willing to have a discussion but you gotta be intellectually honest. You gotta be willing to admit you're wrong because otherwise there's no point. Like I said to all of you last time in November, which by the way, did that uh, measure prevent any uh, guns from getting in here and threatening your lives? Because it didn't. Wow. So like I said, my 120 pound Tibetan Mastiff drops loads with more integrity and knowledge about guns than each of you have. No, sir, that was the last person that signed okay. to speak. Next on our agenda is mayor and council comments. I just want to say I have a bit of sad news to share with the council before you give your remarks. I got um, word that I, one of our, our former vice mayors and council member, Mr. Claude Thomas, passed away this morning um, suddenly. So um, details are forthcoming. I just wanted to uh, share that with you all. Councilman Pete, you have any remarks today? Yes, Mayor, thank you. First, I want to start off with Thank you to everyone that participated in the uh, Dumfries Field Day event. We had an awesome time out there. The weather was very nice. I want to thank the um, Fire and Rescue Department, um, the Playmakers Elite football team, um, DJ Inc. He was a very good DJ. I want to thank Pillar Church for uh, helping assist with the activities also. The Forest Park Dance Team. And I also want to thank our citizens and most importantly, our town of Dumfries Police Department. We had a good time out there, guys, and it was something great to see. I also want to speak on the renewal of the um, park that's going on. And uh, again, um, town manager, I want to thank you for, you know, moving forward with a lot of the renovation that's going on at the park right now. Uh, I want to thank you for including and uh, having more presence with the uh, police department there. Um, I'm getting a lot of good feedback from there. You know, that, that little corner there is like my baby right now. Um, um, and we're moving away from the donjon. We, we, we have a nice facility. If you guys haven't had a chance to check it out, uh, you know, go by there and check out your, your new facility at your own very own Gear Memorial Park. Uh, I also want to um, highlight that the farmer's market is coming up. The farmer's market is coming up June 18th um, at 3800 Grand Park Road from the hours of 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, it's right there in that space where the fire and rescue center is and where... Hey, yeah. 8 a.m. My, my correction, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. There you go. Okay, um, this is, the location is at 3800 Grand Park, uh, Grand Park Road, right there in between the Fire and Rescue Center, right before Port of Dumfries, and in between uh, Gin Memorial Park. Uh, if you can grab a neighbor, come on out and enjoy yourself. It's going to be something nice to see, something that we haven't had here for some time, partway due to COVID. 
but we're back in the runners now. So uh, let's get back to business and enjoy some of these fruits and vegetables that we have out so we can make these delicious recipes in our homes. Um, also, I would like to say that our children are in Prince William County will be getting out of school next week. Next Friday is the last day of school for our children in the area. Um, as always, I'm a big advocate for the children. And it's not only the responsibility of our police department to keep our community safe, it's each and every individual that's responsible enough uh, to do so. We ask that you keep your vision out, keep your voice out. If you need to, please do contact someone. And for help or assistance, not all the time that we have to contact our police department for bad news. We can also contact them for good, good leadership also. They're a great group of um, individuals on our police department. And uh, if, if need be, reach out to them and talk to them in pass. And there is a great group of uh, team that you put together there, uh, town manager. Thank you much for that. Also, uh, I want you guys to save the date. On July 1st, it is now time to have some basketball fun. We're going to be hosting, uh, I'm going to be hosting a basketball tournament along with the towns of the, the police department uh, against the residents of the community. That's on July 1st, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Save the date. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have for today. Well, thank you, Mr. Pete. Councilwoman DeVille. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's a great segue because I want to commend Councilman Pete. He's very passionate about community, every sense of the word, and the kids. And I, I appreciate you, Councilman Pete. I thank you. I thank Pillar Church. I thank the police department. I thank the uh, uh, Dumfries Volunteer uh, Fire Department um, and all involved for making the inaugural Dumfries Field Day a real good time. And we could not have asked for better weather that day. It was perfect. And we plan to do it all again. So save the date for October 29th. Um, we will have a second Dumfries Field Day. But this is going to be right before Halloween. So we'll have a theme of Marvel heroes or any kind of hero. Just wear your costume. So <laughs> it'll be kind of a costume cosplay meets field day. We want to see all the superheroes come to Dumfries on October 29th. So follow both of our social media information. We'll be coming for that, especially if you would like to get involved. Um, more hands make light work and fun work. Uh, Juneteenth, I think it's safe to call it Juneteenth weekend and Dumfries. How fortunate are we to have so many organizations and community groups interested in making Juneteenth something that we can truly celebrate all weekend in our town, um, starting with the men of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Um, we, there will be a, I think, unveiling of the sign for the Dumfries Slave Cemetery. Um, they will be in Merchant Park pretty much all day. I don't want to say hours because I might have it wrong, but they're going to be out there all day. And then we're going to follow up Sunday with the Juneteenth parade off Cameron Street. And we will have music, dancing, uh, celebration, and it is Father's Day. And uh, everyone's quick to celebrate mothers on Mother's Day. But we are definitely going to have a program celebrating the fathers. And um, at this point, I'll just go ahead and share we are proud, and I say we, I'm speaking on behalf of the Juneteenth Committee, proud to have the incomparable Mr. George Hampton leading our parade as the Grand Marshal. And we're proud to have speakers for our fatherhood uh, celebration or Jubilee in Merchant Park, uh, Supervisor Victor Angry and Dr. Otangby. So these are free events taking place. I think Dumfries is the only place in Prince William, possibly Northern Virginia, that has a weekend long celebration for Juneteenth. So come out and celebrate. Um, Michelle Obama has said, um, when they go low, we go high. And I'm not going low, but I'm gonna go and get real. Um, as a teacher, I'm concerned every day, every year I've taught with active shooter drills, how I would protect my students the best that I can. 
We just wrapped up May, which was Mental Health Month. And to those who pay attention, I speak on it all the time. My mental health is not for sale. You do not have access to harass me with your vitriol commentary on my social media. You don't have a right to have access to me. I'm not your slave. You can sit there and snicker all you want to. But when innocent men, women, and children are being slaughtered because America has a problem addressing the needs to improve her gun laws, to protect the innocent so we can live in this land of the free and the home of the brave, I could care less. I could care less. So yes, Mayor, thank you for sharing that proclamation tonight. And um, God bless everyone who's been impacted by gun violence. And I will forever stand firm on that issue. And I will forever protect anyone who has venom to spew my way from having access to me. Thank you, Mayor. I really the floor. Councilman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so let me just make a statement so it's very clear and clean to whoever is listening. Being a gun advocate is not being ignorant. Being a gun, being a gun advocate is not realizing that we have a gun violence problem in America. There's two different things. I'm a gun advocate. I own several guns since 16. I'm 56 years old right now, and I have several weapons in my house, including AR-15 formats. So it's not an issue of what is you can own a gun or your Second Amendment, right? Here's what we're talking about right now, about protecting American citizens. That's what this issue is. It's not about Second Amendment. You can have your guns. However, we still have a, a, a requirement to meet our citizens' needs. And people dying every day on gun violence is not what we're here to do. So I'm just letting you know where I stand as supporting the Second Amendment. I don't want anyone to come take my guns. However, I don't want my grandkids getting shot on the street because we don't have control over guns. I don't want that to happen. And if you don't have any kids or any relatives that have been shot, killed because of gun violence, you don't have no reference. You have no reference to even think about what's going on here. So with that, I'm going to read some facts about guns in America. Four in 10 U.S. adults say they live in a household with a gun, including 30% who say they personally own. So we're talking four in 10. So every 10 people you see, they, four of them got a gun in the house. Now, for, for personal protection, fine. But that's the magnitude of how many guns going around in the United States. Personal protection tops the list of reasons why gun owners say they own a firearm. I've owned a firearm since 16. I never had to draw my weapon on anyone in 40 years. So it's not about me protecting myself. That's not a real issue for Tyrone. So they didn't poll me. But that's what most people would say because they have no other th nothing else to say. Now, I got several guns because I could do that. It wasn't about uh, uh, protecting myself. I can use one gun and protect myself. I'm a gun advocate. I like to go shooting at the range. I came up in Georgia. I go hunting. I hunt for food. This is my background. However, I realized that in some cities and some towns, they don't have the same mentality that I have. Where these people are using these AR-15s to say that they're hunting, okay, you don't deer hunt with an AR-15. Okay. You don't deer hunt with an AR-15. So my point that I'm trying to make here, some guns are not needed in society. We have them. You have the right to own them. However, how are you using these things? And what are you, your, your mental state when you're buying these weapons? It's something that needs to be addressed. That needs to be addressed right now. And let's talk about mental illness in America. One in out of five people are diagnosed with a mental illness. May not be serious, but it's a mental illness. And then you have congressional people talking, senators and representatives talking about there's a mental health issue in the United States. Well, therefore, 
one in five Americans should not own a gun if you want to go that route. If mental illness is the issue of why people are shooting people, and one out of five people are diagnosed as having a mental illness, then there's a problem right there. I don't buy into the concept that it's a mental issue by itself. It's your responsibility, your, your upbringing, your, your environment. All those things have to play into a fact whether you can own a gun or not. And if it doesn't, we're going to continue to have these slaughters over and over again. And every time it happens, we're going to come together and talk about we need to make some gun control laws. People, this is a cycle, a vicious cycle that's not going to stop until someone says enough is enough. And you can be a gun advocate and say, okay, I don't like gun violence. It is nothing wrong with that. Whether you're Republican or Democrat or right in the middle, you have to not be so ignorant to see that there's a problem with people getting shot and killed in the United States and not in other countries. Why is that? Access. Screening. The number of guns that's in the population. Those things have effect on why we have a higher risk for people dying of, of gunshot, of gun wounds. Now, that's a fact. Not Tyrone saying, I didn't do the poll. So we need to pull back a little bit, whether you're Republican or Democrat, and start looking at some real things that can help our society. There's a lot of things that we can do. And I actually reach out to your senators and, and, and to the, the representatives in Richmond and voice your opinions and your ideas, because if not, we'll be here in another two months talking about, not another two months, probably this weekend, talking about another uh, 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 slaughter. Thank you, Mayor. Councilwoman Mouse, please maintain the quorum. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to say I wholeheartedly agree with Councilman Brown's statements. Uh, I also call, echo the call to reach out to your senators and congressmen for some reasonable legislation to protect us. At this point, we have to decide whether we're going to be a country that loves our guns more than we love our children in schools. And that is not where we want to raise our kids. That's not how we grew up and our children deserve better and we can do better. Uh, in addition to that, I would like to say we want to continue to pray for the families of the victims in our recent shootings, that they be pray that they be blessed with comfort during this time as much as possible, and that we don't forget these victims. In addition to that, when we talk about gun violence and we talk about uh, keeping our children safe, I want to remind parents as, as school is coming to a close this year, we do have a partnership with the Boys and Girls Club. So there are scholarship opportunities available for the citizens of the town of Dumfries. So please reach out to them. Keep our children occupied and active during the summer. And with that, I will yield. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to just say um, that being anti-gun violence does not mean being anti-gun ownership or anti-gun rights. I wanted to make that uh, very clear. And you know, the language that's used for those people who are pro-gun is is very um, misleading. And and the way that those conversations are, are thrown out there and the attacks that are being used for anyone who speaks out in opposition of gun violence. It's it's really gaslighting, and it's it's sad that there's no separation of the conversation and the delineation between what being anti-gun violence is in comparison to be an anti-gun ownership, because there is a very clear difference as Councilman Brown has so eloquently described. Um, I also would like to ask um, Ms. Pandek, what recourse do we have to prevent the outburst from Mr. Hand? Because every time he comes into this chamber, he makes a mockery of our, our system here. He is disruptive and disrespectful. I don't know know um, whether or not we have any recourse to prevent him from doing that, but he is disruptive and very disrespectful. And I know that as a citizen, he has a right to view 
our meetings, but does he have a right to sit in here and disrupt us and, and make a mockery of what we're doing here and conducting our business up here? Mr. she responds now, please. Okay. Mr. Mayor, the answer is that um, people have a right to be express their opinions. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're giving your citizens time, which you allow, but they do not have a right to be disrupted. And uh, I will be glad to chart out for the mayor working with Mr. Rogers uh, some words of warning that can be given that certain statements are inappropriate. If the person continues to make them after being told, uh, either in writing in advance or in the meeting itself, uh, then the council can certainly take action to have that person must stop the meeting mm -hmm. to leave the meeting escorted out. Right. So the answer is no, this is intended to be an open meeting. It's intended since you've decided to have citizen time to allow opinions, but people do not have the right to uh, engage in disruptive behavior or to use uh, certain terms that would be considered to be offensive uh, to the common knowledge. And and I also want to be clear, the issue is not his differing opinion, because we are absolutely open to hearing the difference opinions. We have difference of difference of opinions here, even on the diets. So that's definitely not the issue. It's it's his behavior. His behavior is very disruptive and even threatening. This is not the first time he's been so disruptive. And in the past, he's even been threatening. So I would like for us to to begin to track this behavior so that we can, uh, you know, document it in a way that we can take whatever measures are available to us to prevent him from escalating. Because what we don't want is for his behavior to escalate to a point of it becoming, you know, threatening and things getting out of control. Um, I also want to, as my last comment, extend my deepest and most sincere condolences to the Thomas family. Thank you, Mayor. I yield the floor. I attach myself to all of my colleagues' comments. Uh, I won't belabor the point on the uh, gun violence. I signed a pledge with uh, mayors across the United States against this illegal gun violence. Uh, it's the uh, proclamation. Um, we actually had some lengthy conversations at our National League, the city conference in March about it. So um, I won't belabor, but I, I will say, uh, I, I didn't say that my, my comment about books was they're banning books way faster than they will even ban a gun. That that was I just want to give a point of clarity on my comments was they're banning books quicker than they're banning guns. And uh, the legal age now, I think, in Texas to buy cigarettes and alcohol is 21. But at 18, when you're not even mentally mature yet, you're able to buy an assault weapon. But I digress. I, I definitely want to give my condolences to Miss Gloria Thomas and, and her entire family. Um, you know, Mr. Thomas, he served on various boards and commissions. Uh, he also was an active council member and he served as the vice mayor. He was a, a tremendous service and an asset and a pillar in this community. And we definitely, uh, as a town, I uh, wanna extend our condolences to his family. Anytime you have a sudden loss like that, it's, uh, it's, it's heavy on a family. They were actually on vacation. And so um, we send our sincere condolences. Uh, June, in addition to uh, some of the other things that our colleagues talk about, every June I talk about how this one group is always forgotten, and that's the fathers. Not Miles. <laughs> no, I'm just saying nobody mentioned Happy Father's Day to us as we come up. We don't have another week. So it's Father's Day this month. School school actually ends in a couple of weeks. Um, so make sure that we are looking out. It's graduation season. I want to say congratulations to all of those who are, uh, who are graduating. Um, I just want to say a special shout out to the Coalition of 100 Black Women. Uh, their mentoring program that they've been doing over at Dumfries Elementary School 
has been amazing to those young girls. I got to witness the uh, graduation ceremony last week and um, got to see uh, and hear some of the, the poems and some of the essays that the young girls wrote. And it was just uh, a beautiful thing to watch. So I see Dr. Howard over there in the back. No, she's not there. I thought I okay. <laughs> Yeah, Miss Bonner. So I just wanted to say definitely um, thank you for uh, what they have been doing. Also, um, we will give an update on the state of the town on June the 23rd, just of where we've come. We've ended our fiscal year. We've approved our new budget. Um, so please RSVP if you're going to attend. And at that time, that concludes uh, my comments. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, was there anything else for the good of the council that I missed? Okay. All right. Who's that? Oh, Mr. P. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mayor. I have a correction on the community versus the police department date. The date is set for July the 21st. That's July the 21st, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you. Ooh, I'm out of town. Hey. All right. Thank you. Well, at this time... Mayor. Yes, sir. Speaking on what Vice Mayor was speaking of earlier about Mr. Hand, are we at a point now to where we can make a decision on that move? Part? Okay. Because I say this, because part of us even having the extra additional security here was put because of his behavior last year. Now we're rolling back into it. First day he's been back in a long time. I understand getting out of here at a certain amount of time, but this disruptive behavior on a constant kind of warms me up a little bit. It's like really uncalled for to come up here and to, you know, to just cut down. I'm cool with that. But when we, his time is over, he still has the floor a little bit. I just want to know what can we do now? Moving forward. Mr. Mayor, I, I, I appreciate the frustration of council. Under the law, you have to give notice to the person first of what their behavior is that is offensive. And then they don't stop, then you can direct them to stop them without action taken to uh, remove them from a meeting, but that notice hasn't been given. So uh, that's why uh, Can we get that out tomorrow, town manager? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll come back and put something together. Dre. Dre. Huh? Oh, we'll put the, they have the attorney traps on that for us. As I indicated earlier, we will then work with the manager. Mr. Mayor, I have a point to that. Um, while you're researching, you're speaking and working with this with Mr. Rogers, I would like it noted to me. Mr. Hand threatened us. He came in and he said, you passed a gun ordinance and it hasn't kept any guns out of this chamber. To me, I heard he may have had a gun with him. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration as well. And I'm not trying to tell you guys how to do your job, but he made a direct threat on this council. So it wasn't just his disruptive behavior. It was the threat of what he could possibly do. So just wanted to put that out there. Mayor, I want to add to that, if you don't mind. Um, that's the same way I heard him. I, and that's what I just said. I'm like, he threatened all of us. And um, again, I don't mind. I don't, hey, as a council, I, I disagree with council a whole lot. It's okay. You know, and that's fine to disagree. But to be disrespectful. Um, and on another level, he does not have the right to harass me. For, so for someone to come tonight and make that threat, but then you're mad because you don't have the right to harass me on social media. I, I will be talking to you once we wrap up about my personal recourse. Maybe we all need to do a stay away or something because, you know, you know, I'll just stop right there. But he definitely threatened us. And that's on the record. It was recorded. And when I add that to what he's doing, stalking my social media and then up here saying he wants access to continue to do so. That's a real problem. So I, I specific questions I'll ask you once we wrap up. All hearts and minds clear. I'm gonna... 
So right. it's clear that we will take action. We will take action. We'll take some. All right, this time we will adjourn this meeting.